Welcome to MMA Dogs. My name is Hector, and as always, I want to thank you for tuning in. A special thank you to all of our clients. And uh, UFC 183. This is a card that I really, really have been looking for for looking forward to for a long time now. So I'm very excited that it's actually taking place. And uh, it's an interesting card. You know, it's almost like a Brazil versus the rest of the world, or Brazil versus the USA type of a type of a card. And uh, there are some very um, interesting matchups, some very evenly matched fights. But I have found some opportunity, and uh, and I'm looking forward to to placing um, some uh, wagers. And uh, so yeah, let's let's dive right into it. Before I go into it, of course, you always want to uh, be very careful, and you never want to bet more than you can afford to lose. And then, uh, much respect to all the men and women who step into the octagon, and you also want to check your local laws and government. Now, just a couple of numbers before I get started. So, the last five events, uh, the profit has been plus 15.97 units, and the event success is four wins and only one loss. So, thank goodness for that. Um, for this card, I was very, very selective. I spent a ton of time um, researching for this fight and for this fight card and really breaking down these fighters and really trying to find the the best choices making the best choices and so uh, I have narrowed it down really really narrowed it down um, to what uh, to what I believe will happen tonight so uh, with that being said let's go ahead and jump into it so for the first fight of the night we have Thiago Santos versus Andy Enns. Now, at first glance, I was jumping up and down. Yeah, woo! Thiago Santos, great. Then I saw the price, and I was like, okay, this this is fair. You know, I was I was thinking, you know, this is about a, a fair price. And and um, to, today the line is settled at minus one seventy for Thiago Santos. Um, but Thiago Santos. He has faced, so he faced uh, Cesar Ferreira, who submitted him really quickly. And that's that's the fight that gives me a little bit of concern. I know the fight was on short notice, but Andy Enns will have the same game plan. He's going to go in there and try to take him down and try to um, try to submit him. Against Honey Marks, uh, he knocked Honey Marks out. And uh, I remember that was a do not bet on Honey Marks. I said don't bet on Honey Marks in this, in this particular spot. And Santos knocked him out. You could chalk that up as a fluke, I suppose. You say, well, that was just a fluke. And uh, and then the fight with Uriah Hall, where he went to a decision, but Uriah Hall never pressured the takedown, never went for a takedown. So realistically, it if you want to be as, if you want to analyze the situation as much as possible, this really could be the first time that Thiago Santos goes up against a guy like Andy Enns, who's going to want to take him, Put him up against the cage. He's going to want to take him down. Andy Enns is going to want to John Fitch him, ride it out. You know, he's got Andy Enns got two losses in a row, and he's going to lose his job if he doesn't win this fight. So you got to believe that Andy Enns is, is is going to go in there and just try to try to win. And he's going to try to smother him. It's going to be real frustrating, you know, being on Thiago Santos. But Andy Enns just doesn't have anything for him on the feet. His his striking is just very slow, very robotic. Uh, there's nothing fluid. There's nothing loose about him. You know, he's just, just. Oh man, I, I really, I'm really um, surprised that that. Uh, I'm very surprised that he's still. If I think about it, you know, will he still be in the UFC after this fight? I don't. I really don't think so. I really don't think so. The only way Andy wins is if he smothers him and John fitches him to 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 a to a victory. Now, Thiago Santos on the feet, very loose, very fluid, very powerful. I do believe, I do believe Thiago Santos' takedown defense will be enough. But I hate being on the on the fighter. I hate being on the end of a fighter who has to, who could possibly get smothered, who could possibly get, um, you know, taken down, smothered, and just just beat up, you know, just just laid on top of, and, and that's really frustrating. So. Uh, Ultimately, if I had to bet this fight, it would definitely be Thiago Santos. I think on the feet, he can light him up. I think on the feet, he can knock him out. 
So that's actually going to be my prediction. Santos by knockout. But the reason I shared all that and the, and the ends information is because those are my concerns. That, those are my concerns in this fight, and I'm really trying to eliminate any any loss, any loss at all. So I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, Santos does knock him out. If I had to bet it, it would definitely be Thiago Santos, and I will be betting Thiago Santos in a small parlay because I can't ignore that on the feet. I mean, he can just light him up. Takedown defense should be good enough, especially at this point in their careers. Thiago Santos in the prime uh, of, of his uh, physical a prowess, you know, 31 years old, and uh, and Ian's only being 23, 24 years old. So I do see Santos winning this fight by knockout, and uh, you know it's not the the, the five star pick, woo, but it is a it is going to be a bet, very small, but uh, but this is the guy that I was talking about. I was just kind of going back and forth, and and uh, ultimately I'm going to go ahead and go with it. So Santos by knockout, and uh, that is a pick and a bet. Ildemar Alcantara versus Hitcherson Mojeya. This is a very interesting matchup, and I th and um, unfortunately, people did pick up on a couple things, and this is what I think people picked up on with uh, with Hitcherson Mojeya moving down to a very comfortable 185. He's very strong for the division, and uh, just 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 like his name says, a monster, but. This monster doesn't have any cardio. Hitchens and Mojea should. This is what he should do. And this is what I think he will do. He's got uh, Toquinho as his training partner. He's cage side with him. He's got the same type of build, the same type of physique. Maybe not as ridiculous, but very similar to Toquinho. He could take down Ildemar in the first round and submit him via leg lock, maybe an ankle lock, some type, some type of uh, uh, you know, leg lock. Maybe you know, move transition to an arm bar or something along those lines. But anyways, he can win by submission in round one. And uh, my concern here, though, is Ildemar is moving up to 185 where he, his weight cut won't take as much out of him. So there's a possibility that he will actually, Ildemar will be stronger. He will have more, car, he will have more condition. He will have, be better conditioned, more cardio. And uh, the weight cut will have not taken so much out of him. Overall, Alcantara is more the more polished fighter um, on, on the feet, Alcantara all day. On the ground, it would be close, but because of Mojeda's uh, strength and power, he that gives him a big edge on the ground. So on the feet, I think Alcantara, but on the once he gets on the ground, Mojeda could land could land heavy ground and pound. But ultimately, I think he'll go in there with a Toquinho type of game plan. Oh, and um, Alcantara, the other thing that gives me reserve why I can't bet Mojeda is because Alcantara spent his time with uh, Greg Jackson, I think three months or two months, and that definitely helped. And so um, Alcantara looks ready. You know, he's got everything to be to be uh, to be excited about here. Um, like I said, on the feet and uh, going up against a guy who hasn't proven anything in the UFC yet. So he's uh, training Greg Jackson. He's got a lot of things in his favor. And um, he's no slouch on the ground either. Uh, with Mojeda, he hasn't proven anything yet. I think he will prove something tonight. He hasn't proven it yet. The odds aren't that juicy enough to say, oh, you know what, let's take a stab at Mojeda here. And uh, But I do believe Mojeda will win. If I had to bet it, it will be on Rich Church and Mojeda. And uh, it'll be by submission in round one. Diego Brandao versus Jimmy Hedges. Wow. At first glance, I thought, oh, yeah, Diego Brandao all day. And then I started refreshing myself on these fights and what they're trying to do and, and Jimmy Hedges and everything. And my concern with Diego Brandao is that uh, his cardio, you know, if Diego Brandao could fight like he does in the first round for three rounds, okay, let's, let's go with Brandao. But uh, he doesn't. And uh, he cut down to 142, so that already threw this fight out the window. You know, already, this is, this is it. No, do not bet. I'm not interested in betting this at all. One, cutting all the way down to 142. And, uh, you know, in the, like I said, in the first round, it could be brand out. Maybe even in the early second part of the second round. But after that, it's going to be Hedis all day. Hedis is going to, just like, uh, like I said earlier, John Fitch. John Fitch's way, grind it out. There's better opportunities here, and um, ultimately, I think that Hedis will survive the first round, and I think that he will slide a slide his way to a decision, and a very boring fight, you know, very uh, ugly fight. If if Brandao wins, 
it'll be a fun fight. You know, he's going to go out there and win, be a knockout. Woo, what a, what a win. If Hedis wins, it's going to be a decision, boring. Possibly Hedis could get a submission in round three. So this, this one is up in the air. Too many variables in this one for me. So do not bet. The pick will be Hedis. Hedis by decision. But I don't have any confidence in this fight whatsoever. None. None. This, I wish we could toss this fight out. Um, Diego Brandao would have came in. I mean, I how 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 ridiculous is that? I mean, 140, 142. Talking about guys missing weight, but this guy is coming in so light. Looks like hell on the on the on the scale. I mean, something. He's got to have guys in this corner. You know, that that's uh, it's just this fight's out for me. So head us by decision. Do not bet. Not even nothing. Um, Rafael Natal versus Tom Watson. Now this one, this one, I am very very watching very closely. You can get Natal at. Minus 125, minus 130 range right now, and uh, I am, I am, I am very, very tempted to because I think Natal has what it takes to win this fight. He can win this fight on the ground, um, on the feet. Ah, man, he better be careful. But on the ground, he, he can definitely win it. He can ride out a decision. With Tom Watson, we have a, a one-dimensional fighter. I know he's been working in. LA and working on his rain wrestling and everything, but he hasn't shown, he hasn't proven it. Natal has, has time out, time in, time out, proven that he can win in the octagon, even if it's like, ah, you know, holding, holding on for dear life. You're holding on to your, to your, to your, to your heart, and you know, oh God, come on, just write out this decision <laughs> and win this fight. And um, man, I, I never thought Natal would be all the way down to minus 125, 130. So I'm very interested in this, and I'll, I'll be. Uh, I'll be watching that line closely, um, but ultimately it's going to be a pass for for me. I I just don't too many variables here, and the last thing we need is to have a typical Natal fight, and uh, and Watson goes in there and takes takes care of the job. But if I had a bet, it would definitely be Natal. Uh, I think Natal will win a decision, if not get a submission. And uh, with Watson, I just I haven't been impressed. You know, I, I I had I had higher hopes for him, especially since he's training up. Uh, where he needs his training to be, and and um, I just haven't seen it from him. I really haven't. I mean, on the feet, like I said, he's dangerous and the clinch and stuff. But but I, I don't see it for him. So I like Sapo here to win a decision. If I had to bet, it will be Sapo, and I'll definitely be watching that line. John Lineker versus Ian McCall. Wow, another fighter who missed weight. Not really surprised with Lineker missing weight. Um, I see Ian right doing his uh, doing his using his his uh, his footwork. And using his striking, possibly even using his wrestling, to keep Lineker, uh, to keep Lineker honest. Lineker is going to be looking for the knockout. I don't think it'll come. I think McCall will win. The the line is heavily on McCall's side, and uh, ultimately it's going to be a do not bet. Uh, I don't I don't want to bet this fight at all, and uh, I'm not going to deny that Lineker has knockout power, heavy knockout power. And uh, and Lineker, if you look at the fight with Ali Bagnatinov, you know he was going up against Lineker was going up against a guy who was on uh, I think EPO, some some kind of cardio um, enhancer. And uh, and in my opinion, at least for Ali is uh, was I mean I guess now with the with the drug steroid at the time more dangerous than than uh, than uh, than McCall is so. Uh, if you look at it that way, you know, especially the stylistic matchup, McCall um, could take it on the feet, on the ground. So do not bet. The pick will be McCall by decision, but I'm not interested in betting it. Derek Brunson versus Ed Herman. Wow, what an interesting storyline here. Now, if you just look at the at the talent of it, of the of the of the fight, Brunson should win this fight. Younger, fresher fighter, powerful wrestling. Uh, ever improving striking and at first I thought to myself man I can't wait to, to put Brunson uh, in a parlay a two leg parlay and uh, he'll be a strong you know strong leg in that parlay like somebody I can count on but uh, I'm not I'm not so sure now you know I really am not Ed Herman is uh, perhaps will be too emotional for this fight he does want revenge on this Derek Brunson character but Eric Brunson's at minus 600 minus what is he at right now Minus 600, minus 650, minus 650, minus, minus 700, minus 900 at one spot. 
and uh, people are just completely counting out Ed Herman, and I can't blame him. You know, I really can't. Um, Ed Herman will gas. Uh, you know, he he will probably be controlled by Derek Brunson on the ground, but but I'm not I'm not eager at all to lay that kind of pr price on Brunson. Um, I think Ed Herman will come in prepared. I think he will give him a fight. And, uh, and Brun the, all Brunson done, does his decision. Who knows? Maybe Ed Herman will steal decision. So do not bet. Not interested in betting this character at all. I mean, who, who, who is this guy who's minus 900? So uh, do not bet. Um, if I had to bet it, might sprinkle a little something on Ed Herman. But, uh, but I mean, sprinkle. Just not, almost nothing on Ed Herman. So do not bet this. The pick, of course, will be Brunson. I mean, that, that's that's a logical pick. Takes him down, controls him, beats him up, ground him, a little ground and pound, and, uh, and that's it. But I won't be surprised if Ed Herman lands a knockout maybe in round one or maybe makes it competitive or maybe wins a decision. I think Ed Herman will come and possess, seeking revenge for Chris Lieben, and, uh, and uh, Brunson's not worth the price, in my opinion. So do not bet. If anything, I'd sprinkle on Ed Herman, and uh, the, the pick, of course, will be Brunson by decision. Misha Tate versus Sarah McMahon. Oh, wow. This fight, I I really like for Sarah McMahon. Uh, Misha Tate, I mean, it's just, she hasn't, man, she just throws fights away. The fight with Kat Zingano, she just it, takes Ronda Rousey down when she's um, I don't know if I'd say beating her up, but definitely connecting on the feet. Just, I mean, this girl just does not have the the, the right idea when she gets in the octagon. And at this point in her career, I, I don't I don't see it for her. And Sarah McMahon, she is just a a beast, you know, just a just a a very very powerful lady. And uh, I see McMahon winning a decision. Um, I, I think McMahon can beat her wherever anywhere she wants. And uh, Tate is tough, but Ultimately, I think she's going to lose. So McMahon by decision is the pick. McMahon by decision will be the bet, and I really like this fight uh, for for uh, for Sarah. I really like this fight for Sarah. I don't care if the fight's entertaining at this point. You know, I just want Sarah to win. And I wouldn't be surprised if Sarah actually TKOs her, uh, makes her quit, but I doubt it. So McMahon by by uh, by decision. Diago Alves versus Jordan Meehan. This is another fight that I'm watching very closely here. Um, uh, some variables here, and that's the reason I'm not gonna not gonna bet it. I was going to bet uh, Jordan Meehan, and uh, we'll see how the night goes. But uh, Diego Alves used to be a, a contender, and Jordan Meehan is coming on the scene and looking more and more like a uh, like he belongs at the at the 170 UFC, you know, maybe the top 10 of the UFC 170 welterweight division. Um, I think on the feet, Diego Alves will use his kicks, and uh, I think the wrestling will neutralize each other out, and uh, we I think we could see one of these split decision type of type of things. If not, me in by knockout. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Diego Alves just hasn't looked the same since he did when he fought, uh, even before he fought GSP at UFC 100. Um, so I think I think ultimately Alves is done. I think Jordan Mean will win. I think he could win by knockout, possibly. Jordan Mean will be the pick. Jordan Mean, possibly a bet. I'll be watching that one. And uh, but you know he can't deny Alves. He's been around forever. He trains with Robbie Lawler. He's uh, he's got my Dolce's his BFF, you know. And he, he's got he's got the right people around him, and, and uh, he's got a good team. So um, so that's a tough one. It's a tough one. I think Mean, like I said, could, younger, fresher fighter. He should be very motivated for this fight, and he should definitely be looking to make a statement here. Put himself on the scene. So me and by decision, possibly by knockout. If I had to bet it, definitely me and, and that'll be that. Dayless Leites versus Tim Boach. Wow. Hoo-wee. Dayless Leites all day. He can win this fight by decision. He can win this fight by knockout. He can win this fight by submission. So uh, I like Leites here. I like the Novo Nyao product here. And I think he's going to continue to rise here. Tim Boach, you know, he's he's over there in, uh, in Maine training with uh, Marcus Davis. I don't know about that move. You know, he was training over here with uh, 
Matt Hume, they should have found some kind of compromise game plan versus just pure aggression. They should have found some kind of compromise. That concerns me. I think Tim Boach is towards the end of his career. And uh, I really like late this here. Late this for the pick by decision, possibly possibly submission, possibly knockout. Um, definitely we'll be betting it, so we'll go into that in a little bit. Joe Lozon versus Al Iquinta. Now, if Iquinta keeps it on the feet and plays it real conservative and real safe and, and, and to his to his realm of, of, of fighting, Iquinta will win a decision, no doubt about it. Maybe even the third round knock him out. I doubt it. Joe Lozon, on the other hand, is going to have to find a way to take this fight to the ground. And I think he'll find a way. Um, he uses all kinds of tricks and things to get the fight to the ground, which is very entertaining to watch. Uh, do not bet. If I had to bet it, it would be Lozon. Uh, looks like all the money's coming in on Iaquinta. And I can't blame people. You know, Iaquinta should, should have learned his lesson about going to the ground. Kevin Lee, nearly, uh, you know, just, just so many, just so many, so many guys he's fought who put him in all kinds of, Mitch Clark. I mean, so many guys who he's fought put him in a world of trouble. And if Mitch Clark can submit Iaquinta, you better bet Joe Lozon can. So I like, I like Lozon here, submission round two. Uh, I'm not super confident about it. I'm going to watch the line. If I had a bet, it would be Lozon. Uh, nothing major, just a sprinkle, like I said earlier, about, uh, what was I talking about earlier? Uh, Ed Herman. Maybe more, a little bit more than Ed Herman. But, but um, anyways, Lozon by submission round two. Do not bet. Here we go. Co-main and main event. Tyron Woodley versus Kellen Gastelum. It's a real shame that Gastelum miss weight because I was looking to bet Tyron Woodley at near even money, uh, even plus money, plus 105. And uh, so this this fight really made me think about when I release my picks and when I release my bets. I think what I'm going to do in the future is, um, is release some of my research and some of my bets as I go because I would have loved to... I would love for you guys uh, to have gotten Tyron Woodley at plus money, or at minus, you know, just about even, you know, even money. And uh, with with my, you know, with my uh, recommendation, with my endorsement on it, um, and uh, you know, that's one of those things where you look at the fight, and then somebody like Kelvin Gastelum really messes up. You know, God knows. You know, it, it not taking it seriously, or maybe an injury. There's multiple things, all negative, as to why he would have missed weight. So I'm predicting Tyron Woodley first round knockout. I predict he comes out there like he did against Jay Heron, knocks him out. We've seen Kelvin get uh, rocked, and uh, unfortunately, by Kelvin missing weight, everybody jumped on Tyron, and so yeah, minus 170 now, minus minus 170 ish show. It's not the end of the world, of course, but uh, but when we're looking to to get the best odds, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things that 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 I've thought about, and um, so in the future, uh, possibly I'm not making any any guarantees or promises, but possibly I'm thinking start I'm gonna start releasing the picks as they come, and then uh, if we have a if we have a you know a food bar or something. You know, it, it just it leaves a lot. It leaves a lot for a question if if we do it that if I do it that way. So, uh, for now, we'll we'll keep it as is. But I'm definitely considering releasing some of the some of the picks because regardless of whether Kelvin Gastelum missed weight or not, regardless of it, my pick and bet Tyron Woodley, I I have a good gauge on this guy and uh, and I think he's gonna get the first round knockout. So Tyron Woodley is the bet even at minus 170. It doesn't matter. First round knockout. Tyron Woodley all day, and uh, oh, and just to touch on Gastelum, just so uh, just to give him his respect here. Um, Kel, uh, what's his name? Jake Ellenberger. That fight doesn't impress me one bit. Uh, the Rick Story fight, you know, very close. Um, fight against Nico Musoke. I, I believe he got rocked once or twice in that one. I'm trying to remember which fight he got rocked in. Just uh, he, you know, he's a he's a good prospect, a, a good kid, but. He's going up against a freight train here in Woodley. And uh, so, yeah, Woodley for the bet and the pick. Anderson, finally the return of Anderson Silva versus Nick Diaz. Now, for this fight, I had to totally remove my, 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 uh, 
I had to totally remove myself as a fan from it. And so there is no bet on Anderson Silva. There is no bet on Nate Diaz. What I really like here is the under. I really like the under. Under three and a half rounds. That means that I believe the fight will be finished before the uh, at least before the fourth round and a half mark. And I do think that'll be the case, whether Anderson goes down, getting knocked out, or Nick Diaz knocks him out. That, that I believe, is going to happen. I think the first round, Anderson will do his thing where he feels it out. He's always done that, though. In the second round, that's when we'll see the kicks and the punches and everything start to land. My concern for Anderson here is that his chin is gone, just like Chuck Liddell. Remember when Chuck Liddell got knocked out by Rashad Evans, and then he started getting... And we were like, what the hell? And that was it. Rich Franklin even knocked him out. Would it really be surprising if Nick Diaz knocks out Anderson Silva? Maybe for some people, but not for me. So I think if it, it when it ends, it'll be round two, round three, maybe, round two. I think the fight will be over round two. I think ultimately the spider will win Silva by knockout round two. But if Diaz knocks him out, it wouldn't surprise me. So I'm not betting... I'm not betting either side. I'm betting the under because I think that's what is going to happen, and I like the price on it. So Silva by knockout round two, but like I said, do not bet. I'm not betting any individual fighter. Just betting the under. That's what I like, and that's what I'm going to roll with. So for the bets, we got MMA Dogs, UFC 183, five stars, none, unfortunately. Tyron Woodley, a very close candidate for a five-star. Tyron Woodley, medium to large bet, four stars. Let's go on to the three stars. We have, make sure I'm looking at, there we go. Taylor's Leites will be a medium play. Sarah McMahon will be a medium play. And the under will be a medium play. Under 3.5 rounds, Silva versus Diaz. So here we go, here we go. MMA Dogs bets. One unit equals 1% of the bankroll. Uh, keep the ratio the same. So um, Tyron Woodley, minus 170, five units to win 2.94. And like I said, this is... This is nothing new. Whether Kelvin made weight, missed weight, doesn't matter. The bet would have been on Tyron Woodley, and uh, the pick would have been Tyron Woodley by first-round knockout. It's just unfortunate for us that this happened because it doesn't change anything. If anything, it just changes the price. But you know, what you gotta sometimes you gotta roll with it. Tyron Woodley at minus 170 plus Diego Santos at minus 170 equals plus 152, one unit to win 1.52. The under, 3.5 rounds, Silva and Diaz, minus 150, three units to win two. And Taylor's latest at minus 400, and Sarah McMahon at minus 185, that gives us minus 108. Three units to win 2.78. Grand total, 12 units to win 9.24. So, that does it for the day. I'm very excited for tonight. I uh, hope you guys are too. Uh, if you're tuning in, thank you very much. Um, for this year, my goal is to just win as many events as possible really really filter through filter through these fighters really filter through these fights and pick nothing but winners to bring nothing but profit uh not only to myself but to all of our clients to, to everybody who who uh who's always um supported us and 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 even from the youtube days when you know just started doing this um just just to share my picks and help people out um, you know, now we charge a small fee, but <clears throat> that's normal here. You know, it's the, the, uh, the American dream or, you know, any, anywhere around the world, you know, if you, if you're good at something and you want to make money at it, you know, you should go for it and uh, you don't have to be a greedy pig or anything like that. But you know, if you make a, make some money doing it, whether it's big money, small money, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, just follow what, what you, what you're good at and what you, what you like to do. So I hope everybody has a great weekend. I hope you guys all enjoy the fights. And I hope we are all hooting and hollering, jumping up and down. Yeah, plus 9.24 units yeah, in your face. Woo! All right, you guys, take care and uh, have a good one.